we got together a little bit earlier than we had originally planned. Um, we've had some developments um, in the case. Uh, we have identified a suspect. I think you all have uh, his name and uh, the descriptive information about him, including the vehicle that he's driving. Um, our detectives are looking to, to speak with Mr. Green right now. Um, we think that uh, he's got some information that's pretty critical to us closing this case out. Um, we can't go into great detail right now, but uh, he's definitely somebody that we want to talk to. I'll let you ask your questions, probably be the best way to go here. Um, Any previous records? Uh, not that I'm aware of. The detectives have told us that he's a suspect. I just received some information about a disturbing YouTube video that you believe has some information about this material. Um, I've heard the same thing. I haven't seen it. What led you to that? Um, the Irvingdale Police, I think uh, Sergeant Nunn would probably speak to that a little bit better, but sure, uh, we can't sure. give you too many details, obviously. Yeah, at this point, I can't give you a whole lot of details as to what led us uh, the direction of wanting to speak with him. All I can tell you is that the investigators have told us um, to release his information in an effort to locate him to try to get some information we feel could be vital to what happened uh, this morning. As far as, a, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to release that information yet either because um, I'm really unsure of his whereabouts. Obviously, that's why we're looking for him. I don't know if he is a current resident of Urbandale or has been in the past. Uh, that information just don't have. The detectives obviously are working on that information um, and trying to locate him at this point. Um, are you looking to speak with him in order to lead to someone else, or is this the person that you want to talk to by name? You know, as I said, this is an ongoing investigation. I don't know uh, what the detective's motives are for speaking with him at this point. Okay. Um, I can, all I can say to you is that uh, we want to get his information out there because we want to make an effort to try to locate him so we can find out more information about what happened earlier this morning. How did you guys get back to the through a series of leads and a series of investigative tips and, and some of the things the investigators have been doing have led us to, be, uh, to believe he's somebody that we need to speak with in regards to the incidents that occurred this morning. Do you have any sense of what may have inspired this? At this point, I don't want to speculate. Uh, I will let the detectives do their job and, and they're working very hard and diligently to find out what happened. Hopefully when we'll get some answers uh, once we locate him and speak with him uh, and the detectives complete their investigation. You know, your question, Dan, I, I think you know that oftentimes with these investigations, we don't figure out what a motive is until we get done. And then there's times there, one, we can't make sense of what their motive is or they don't, they don't even share that with us. So we're, we're not even anywhere close to that and we may never actually know what motivated this act. Not a lot. I mean, just basically what I shared with you is, is what the detectives have given us. They, they uh, think he's got information, like Sergeant Underwood said, that's critical to us closing this case out. Um, we want to find him. As we noted in the press release, we, there's a possibility that he's armed and we believe he'd be dangerous. Um, we don't want anybody to approach him if they see him. If they do, you just call 911. We don't know where he's at. If we knew where he's at, we'd go grab him up. Oh, okay. I mean, so yeah, we do, we don't know. No, we have we've sent this information out about this incident across the nation. Um, you know, clearly there's there's a threat to police officers. Um, definitely not something we thought was going to happen here. Uh, you know, and so we've shared this with everybody that that's, that we can share it with. And we're asking the public to remain vigilant and to obviously call. 911 or the information we provided you guys to provide to the public to assist us in trying to locate him so we can hopefully answer some more of these questions that you guys have asked us. Can you go through again what each department is doing out of the ordinary to protect officers today in terms of their safety? I think the only step that we've taken that's different from our day to day business is that we've partnered our officers up. Um, obviously, you know, there, there's safety in numbers. So uh, we've partnered everybody up today kind of decreases our, our presence um, as we spread out through the city, but um, we're going to be able to cover you know, the calls for service and provide the, the service that we typically do. And then the law enforcement community is very tight-knit. We have a lot of agencies assisting us as well, um, providing more enforcement support in our community, uh, not only for our officers, but for our citizens, just to make everybody feel safe, including the officers at this time. So 
was a list of just uh, press conference this morning. Can you go through what happened this morning, the timeline, the scenario, please? Sure. Um, it was just after 1 o'clock this morning. Uh, the Urbandale, well, it's Westcom, is the dispatch center that provides uh, communication services for the West Urbandale Police Department. They received calls on shots being fired in the area of 70th and Aurora. Um, the first officers that arrived in that area found a, a police officer in a vehicle, his patrol car, that he'd, and he'd been shot. He was dead. Um, naturally, we called in all of our resources to help the Urbandale Police out. Um, we had officers just saturate the area, looking to see if we could figure out what happened or who might be involved. Um, one of those officers came across the Des Moines police officer who was in his car at an intersection and he also had been shot. Uh, he was transported to Methodist Hospital here in Des Moines and that's where he died. Do you know if the Des Moines police officer was shot first or second? Uh, the assumption is, is second. Um, there's some things on calls that we're, we're looking at, but he came to, he went to that area to help after the first call in Urbandale. Do you know how much time was uh, in between those two shootings? Just about 20 minutes. 20 minutes and in just a little bit more, two miles, almost three miles between the two scenes. Was that suspect seen in between those shootings, do you know? We don't know that yet. We're, we're gathering uh, surveillance video from all the local businesses that we can get, um, going door to door. I mean, we're talking about 1.30 in the morning, about between 1 and 1.30 in the morning. So um, finding eyewitnesses is going to be difficult. Say your name, please. Yeah. It's Paul Parizek, P-A-R-I-Z-E-K. Chad Underwood. Yeah, we do, but we can't talk about it. Well, from a, from a not to press, but just from a public safety standpoint, is there anything that would be obvious that people should look for? Mr. Green. Well, just a specific uh, question, and I apologize for just my ignorance. Are, what kind of protection is in the windows of police cars? Are they bulletproof or anything like that? No, it's tempered glass, just like the car you drive. Uh, not yet. We're working on getting that information out to you. When we've made proper notifications, we will release that information to you. We got some family spread out around the state. Do we now know if there was a camera or a body camera on the scene of either one of these incidents? We're still working at the scene, so whatever evidence we gather there probably hasn't even made it back here yet. Okay. Imagine that you lost a friend or a family member. You know, I mean, that's that's the only way you can describe it. You know, uh, very helpless feeling at times, but um, you know, it, it, the sorrow that comes with it is just, just that you lost someone close to you. I mean, these were our friends; um, they were our coworkers. But uh, you know, we we discussed at length at times. You know, the the family of law enforcement, and like uh, Sergeant Underwood just said, we're a very tight knit community. Uh, Des Moines is not a big city. We all know each other, um, so I mean we're, we're heartbroken. I mean I don't know what else how else to put it. There's just really no words at times like this. This is the first loss in the line of duty for the Urban Mail Police Department that I'm aware of. Um, I'd have to go back to the archives to see if there was uh, one prior to this, but um, words can't describe the pain that well, of our agency is feeling so, and our community. anything else well we originally shot for 10 o'clock um, we might be a little closer to lunch hour right? what works best with you guys in your in your broadcast at noon I mean whatever input you got let me know do you want to go does 11 work well, we have a sure. yeah. if we've got something to share and I, I expect at that time we might be in a position to release the officers names um, we'll, we'll shoot for 11, but we will notify you well an hour in advance. Does that work? Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you.